Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here doing a little bit of camera inception for you. Today we're going to talk about how to use the manual settings on your camera for video. Okay, so I have talked about using these settings before, but today I'm going to show you on the camera, on my Sony a7 III, exactly what it looks like when you're manipulating these settings to get the desired effect that you want. So let me hop back there. Okay, so the very first thing that I do is I select my frame rate. So as you can see at the very top of my screen, it says 24p. So that means 24 frames per second. Now every single camera is different how this is all set up, but you can manipulate all of these in your camera, no matter what camera you have. If you have a DSLR or mirrorless camera, these are things that you can change to use in manual mode. The first thing I do is I do my frame rate. So this 24p would be more of like a, a film type frame rate. So a film look. 30 frames per second would be more like TV. 60 frames per second would give you slow motion. You could slow it down by about half. And then 120 frames per second, which I love, you can slow down about by five times or so. So that gives you that super slow motion that is really popular. It really just depends on your creative decision on that. So once you choose whether you want 24 frames per second or 60 or 120, then you just select that option. And then immediately after you want to look at your shutter speed. So shutter speed should always be two times the frame rate. So if you see 24 up here, this needs to be the closest option that you have on your camera to two times 24. So 24 times two is 48. So the closest you can get is 50. So you're gonna wanna set that. Now, if you were shooting at 60 frames per second, you'd be at one 1 25th of a second. If you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you want it at one 250th of a second. As you can see, that darkens the image because that is how much light is being let in during that time period. So the shorter the time period, 1 250th of a second is faster than 1 50th, then less light is gonna be let in in that 1 250th of a second. So as you increase your frame rate, you're gonna to need to increase your shutter speed so it's gonna darken your image. So let's go back to 1 50th because that is the proper shutter speed for that frame rate. And then next, I'm gonna look at my aperture. Now my aperture is more of a creative decision. So this is how much light is let into the camera. The lens is going to open up when you have lower numbers. So 2.0, the lens is wide open at this point. Now, as I increase the aperture, my image is going to get darker. And as I decrease, it's gonna get brighter. And this really affects the depth of field. So 2.0 is gonna give you a shallow depth of field, which means less is going to be in focus. So that's that look where you have a very blurry background, very popular look. And if you increase the number, you're gonna have more in focus. So if you're thinking landscape shots, you're gonna be using a higher number more in focus. So I choose my frame rate first, then I automatically set my shutter speed, and then I choose what aperture I want for that particular shot. And then I go ahead over to my ISO. So that is the sensitivity to light. So that basically adjusts the brightness. So if I bring it down, now it's at 100. It gets darker and as it gets brighter, I bring it up. Now the most I want to use for my camera in particular is about 6400. That will leave me with um, the most amount of noise in my shot that I'm really comfortable with. Depending on the camera, it just really depends. There are some cameras that can only go up to maybe 3200 or something like that, maybe even less for it to be acceptable. As you can see, my metering mode here, it is telling me if my shot is overexposed. It has this algorithm. There are different modes you could use if you want it to focus on the center or a certain spot in the image that you want it to expose for. So if I pick like the upper right corner, it'll tell me if that particular spot is overexposed or underexposed. So it'll be a plus if it's overexposed and it'll be a minus if it's underexposed. But here it kind of takes like this algorithm and takes all the different regions of the shot and then kind of compiles it together. So one tricky thing with this particular shot is I'm shooting directly into a light source, that lamp. So it's taking that and saying, whoa, that is really, really bright. So it might say that I'm way overexposed even though the rest of my shot is exposed and maybe the rest of my shot is what I wanna focus on. So you wanna be careful with that, not just completely rely on that number if you do have that there. Now, what happens if my shot is just too bright after setting the ISO even to the lowest it can go? So if I have my ISO all the way down at 100, you can see down there 100, 
And let's just say, for example, it's not, it's not this shot, that's for sure. Let's say it is still far too bright. Like I just cannot get it any darker because I have my ISO all the way down to 100. Now you have a few different options here. The very best option is to put an ND filter on your lens. So that acts as sunglasses. So it will darken your image automatically without you having to change any other settings. So then you can just mess with the ISO rather than having to mess with your other settings. Now, if you do not have an ND filter and you're in a bind, here are your other options. You can increase the aperture. So if it's too bright, as you can see, if I increase my aperture, the number there, then it is going to get darker. Now, when you do that, you are sacrificing that shallow depth of field. So if you're wanting a shallow depth of field, then you're gonna have to sacrifice that look to be able to expose correctly so the shot isn't just super overexposed. So that's why it's nice to have an ND filter so you can keep the shallow depth of field that you're looking for. Now, if you're not really looking for a shallow depth of field, you don't care that much in that particular shot, then go ahead and create the aperture as high as you need to. So now your third option would be to increase the shutter speed. Now you should never ever do this at 24 or 30 frames per second, but at 60 frames per second or at 120 frames per second, if you're going to be slowing it down, the shutter speed, which affects the motion blur, so if you have the shutter speed way too high at 24 frames per second, let's say I put it at 1 1 25th, I'm going to be choppy looking. It's not gonna look real. I'm gonna look just really weird when I'm moving. But when you're in slow-mo, motion blur doesn't really matter because you're totally slowed down. There is no motion blur. So you can crank the shutter speed as high as you really need to when you're doing slow motion, but just never at 24 or 30 frames per second because you're gonna look all jittery looking. If that's kind of a look that you wanna go for, then go for it. But typically, you're not gonna want to go for that look. So what do you do if it is too dark even after setting your ISO the highest it can go that you're comfortable with? So if I go up to 6400, which is about as comfortable as I feel so that it doesn't have a ton of noise. So let's say even at this point, it is too dark. Now in this shot, it's not. But here are your options. Number one, increase the light source. So really the best options on both ends here to get a brighter or darker is to manipulate something outside the camera itself. You know, is to put something on the lens to make it darker and is to add more light to make it brighter because you don't want to sacrifice camera settings that are optimal for your shot, really only if you have to. So option number one is increase the light source, add a light, go to a different location. If you have LED lights, those are always really helpful. And then your other option is if you are shooting at a higher frame rate, so let's say it's 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second, it is going to be darker automatically because look, you're going to have an increased shutter speed. So it's going to be 1 1 25th of a second or let's say you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you're gonna be at 1 250th of a second for your shutter speed. So it's gonna be darker. You're able to increase the brightness by changing your frame rate to 24 frames per second so that you can bring your shutter speed back down to 50. See, now it got brighter. For this, you are sacrificing slow motion versus not. So if you want that shot to be slow motion, then you're gonna have to increase the light source. If you don't care whether it's slow motion or whether it's 24 frames per second, then this is a good way to increase and add some brightness. All right, so that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have a lot more videos like this in the channel, and I will see you all in the next video.